Story time. A girl named Akira Kendrick sent me the story and the background of it is that her dad was very abusive to her mother and her mother got custody of Akira and her dad was not happy about that. Anyway, so Akira was with her aunt and her cousins at her grandmother's house, all on her mother's side, and her dad stops by to say hello. And Akira's outside playing with her cousin, and her dad comes up to her and grabs her arm and says, do you want to go to Walmart with me? And at the time, she's only seven, so all she hears is toy aisle, so she says, yes, let's go. So they get in the car, they head to Walmart, she gets some really nice pom-poms, and then he says, okay, let's go back to your grandmother's house. So he starts driving and he gets on the highway, and Akira knows that her grandmother's house is right around the corner from Walmart, so he does not need to get on the highway. So she says, dad, where are we going? And he gets really mad and says, shut up sit down it does not matter so akira's in the back seat she's really scared and she just shuts her mouth so after being in the car for a while they eventually arrived at this really old abandoned beat up house and when they walk in akira sees about 25 people and she does not know any of them her dad brings her to a room puts her in a little closet throws her some toys and her pom-poms and says play part two is coming right now Part two of Akira's dad literally kidnapping her. So when they get to the house, Akira is really scared. She doesn't know any of these like 25 people. Her dad brings her to a room, throws her in a closet, puts some toys in there and says play. So after about an hour of being in a little closet with some toys, she finally decides to get up and go look for her dad. So she opens the door and starts looking around and there is no one in the house. There is not even a single trace of somebody ever being there. So of course she starts freaking out and crying. She doesn't know where she is. She's so far away from her grandmother's house and she doesn't have a phone. And so eventually after three hours, she hears somebody. She looks up and her dad is standing there and he says, come on, let's go, the cops are outside. So basically Akira's aunt called the cops and they had a search warrant for him. They ended up finding her dad and they said to him, if you don't take us to her, you will go to jail. And obviously from what I just said, he finally took them to her at this random old abandoned house and they found her. And they ended up putting him in jail anyways, cause why not? Two years in jail and one year on probation. Don't steal children, people. <laughs> don't steal them. So when I was a sophomore in high school, I had this teacher who would only let the students in her class use the restroom one time per semester. Well, one day I raised my hand and I was like, excuse me, I don't remember her name, can I please use the restroom? And she was like, no you can't because you've already used the restroom in my class this semester. <laughs> well, excuse me, you can't dictate my bladder. So I'm like all frustrated and I started secretly texting my mom because I wasn't allowed to use my phone in class. And I was like, mom, I'm sitting in class right now, my teacher won't let me use the restroom. And she was like, I'll take care of it for you. And I was like, okay. So like five minutes goes by and all of a sudden my teacher's phone starts ringing and she walks up to it and answers it and she's like, hello? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And then she walks up to me like so angry and she like slams the pass on my desk and she was like, since you have to go that bad. And I was like, yeah, I really do. Thanks. And I got up and left. I didn't even have to go to the bathroom. It was just the principle of it. I just roamed the halls. <laughs> I was in class on Zoom. I wanted to go to sleep, honestly, because like when I'm tired, I go to sleep. I end up falling asleep and then class ends and everyone starts leaving the class, except me, because I was like in a whole other universe at this point. I was dreaming, I was flying. At this point, me and the teacher are alone in the call. This is the best part. <laughs> then the teacher starts talking to me and he's like, Samantha, wake up. Samantha, please. Samantha, you have another class. He woke me up, but I was half awake, so I didn't really know what was going on. So I thought it was my brother waking me up, and I straight up yelled. I was like, shut up, you fat booger. And so then I realized, oh, let's call my teacher a fat booger. And now he scheduled a parent conference. Um, I'm going on Monday, so I'm really excited. <laughs> I made my teacher cry. <laughs> Story time. When I was in second grade, I had this teacher and she was the devil and we're gonna name her Miss Jackson. And the reason I call her a devil is because she would say really mean things to me to my face. She would be like, Ty, stop talking like that. You sound like a little girl. Or your favorite color can't be pink. You have to choose one of the boy colors. And since I was so young, I didn't understand how serious these things were and I didn't know I can get her in trouble. And I would go home sad like every single day. Eventually my mom noticed and she asked me what was wrong. So I told her some of the things that Miss Jackson would say to me and my mom was mad. And my mom was like, the next time she says something to you, say something rude back. And if you get in trouble, I'll handle her from there. So I was like, okay, I'll do it. Now, Miss Jackson was a heavy lady. So I knew if I said something rude to her, it would be about her weight. Though we don't body shame around here. We don't do that, okay? So I'm in school eating lunch with my friends who happen to be girls. And Miss Jackson comes up to me and she's like, shouldn't you be eating with the boys? So I looked at her and I was like, shouldn't you be eating a salad? And the lunchroom start laughing and then she started crying. <laughs> 
My daughter Savannah is the CEO of faking illness to get out of school. So when she does not feel like being there, she will go to the nurse's office and complain to them that she is really not feeling good so that they call me and I have to go get her. Well, one day after this happens, I walk into the administrative office and everybody is really concerned because Savannah is sitting in a chair like so dramatically like, hi mom. And like when I saw her, I... I burst out laughing. I was like, oh my God, are you okay? And everybody looked at me like I was some really bad mom. Like, oh my God, why aren't you more concerned? But as we were walking out, she was walking really slow and actually didn't look good. So even I was a little concerned. I was like, oh my God, honey, are you okay? Until we got to the car when Savannah looks at me and goes, you know what, mom? I feel better now. And I was like, Savannah, are you serious? And she's like, mom, do you maybe want to go to Starbucks and have like a girl's day? And I was like, honey, what kind of question is that? You know I do. <laughs> So I used to know this girl who would constantly say things like, guys, sorry, I'm so ugly. I just ruined the whole group photo, I'm sorry. And then everyone would automatically comfort her and be like, no, you're beautiful, you shine. And then she would be like, no, but thank you. And she would do the same thing over and over again, trying to get everyone's attention. So eventually I got tired. So the next time she came to me saying, I'm so ugly, I was like, <laughs> you know what, you are. She was like, what'd you say? And I was like, if you think you're ugly, I can crop you out of the photo. You want me to tell you, I'm not the one who made you look like a woolly mammoth. Here's something fun. When you're in a long-term relationship, you'll often find yourself doing this thing with your partner where you'll say, when we have kids, I hope they have this trait of yours. And today my husband was like, I hope our kids will be as resilient and determined as you. When I was 11 years old, I got in a fight with my mum when she was picking me up from school and I was being so rude that she wanted to teach me a lesson and scare me a little bit. So she said, you can find your own way home left me outside of my classroom, got in her car and drove off. Now, realistically, she was just doing the block and was going to come back and pick me up, hoping that I would be apologetic. Uh, but I wasn't. I was very stubborn and was like, I can find my own way home. And I decided to run home. I, in fact, sprinted from the school grounds and ran into a close family friend who offered to give me a lift, which I accepted and I got home by my own means. Now, my mum did do the block and not only came back to me not being where she left me, but to one of my friends saying, yeah, I saw her get in the car with some weird guy. Imagining my mum's soul leaving her body that day is enough for me to not ever want kids, let alone kids like me. Story time. When I was a child, my family and I moved into a big old two-story house. Both my parents worked, so I was often home alone when I came home from school. One evening when I came home, the house was still dark. I called out for my mum just in case she was home and heard her sing-song voice reply from upstairs. I called her again as I climbed the stairs to see which room she was in and again heard the same response. We were decorating the house at the time and I didn't quite know my way around the maze of rooms yet, but I knew she was in one of the far ones right down the hall. Just as I reached for the handle of the door to let myself in the room, I heard the front door downstairs open and my mother call out for me. I jumped back terrified and ran down the stairs to her, but as I glanced back, the door to the room slowly opened a crack. And for a brief moment, I thought I saw something staring back at me. So the other day while my daughter Savannah's in the middle of her Zoom class, she kind of like leaves the room and she goes, hey mom, do we have a pencil sharpener anywhere? And I was like, I don't think so. Like, why do you need a pencil? She's like, yeah, um, my pencil, it's not working anymore. I've actually been sharpening it with scissors. This is her actual pencil she was using. And I was like, um, okay. Pretty sure you have like a million in your room, right? And she was like, no, I can't find any of them. And I was like, of course, like Savannah's very messy and she loses a lot of stuff. So I was like, you know, it's no problem. I go into the kitchen. I go to grab her pen, right? So I'm walking back to her room. Her cat, who likes no one in my house except for Savannah, by the way, is waiting for me. The second my little toe steps foot through her door, she just <coughs> right in my toe. So I fall to the ground and I was like, fuck. Whole class hears me. So embarrassing. Anyways, don't care. Um, so <laughs> I go to give her the pen and she goes, mom, I can't use that. I can't use a pen because I don't want to mess up my notes. Y'all look at her notes. Look at this paper. My daughter. <laughs> so when I was in the fourth grade, I had a science fair where I had to come up with a new invention. And I came up with the greatest idea of all time. I thought it was incredibly innovative new technology. And I called it Brownie CCs, AKA Brownie Cupcakes. Now, the day of the science fair, I showed up to school without my Brownie CCs because my mom didn't have enough ingredients to make them fresh for the class, which is what I wanted. And so my teacher screamed at me and sent me to a second grade classroom to do work all day. And I cried because the rest of the fourth grade got to just have fun and celebrate the science fair. And when I got home, my mom gave me money to get Pokemon cards, which made me 
made me feel a little better. Now, my family is very well versed on this little childhood trauma of mine, especially Savannah. Like, I will literally start off the story, like, randomly and be like, fourth grade, science fair project. And she'll roll her eyes at me and be like, oh, my God, I know, Mom, brownie CCs. Well, I was going through her backpack one day when she was in like the fourth or fifth grade herself and I saw that she stole my invention for her project. I saw the paper, it said Brownie Cece's and I look at her and I'm like, what is this, Savannah? And she's like, uh, uh. <laughs> I'm curious, has any other babysitter had this happen? I was nannying a little girl, she's about four years old. Um, we get back to the house, I picked her up from school, we went to the park, it's dark out now. She's in her bath because it's bath time and she goes, hey, did you see the man in the window? I said, in what window? She goes, in my window. I drove up the man was in the window and my heart sinks because I was like no no I did not see the man in the window so I go and check the house thoroughly and there's nobody in the house but the back door was unlocked and whoever had left the house last I guess left the back door open so that was a little weird but I didn't see a man so I go back in I get to the bathroom and she goes the man's in the hallway now and I was like well I didn't I didn't see a man in the hallway she's like he just walked by and this isn't a kid that I'd, I'd known this child really well and she'd never lied before. So I grab her, wrap her up in a towel, we're out of the house. I call my boyfriend, I'm like, you need to get over here and check this house. There's apparently a man in the house and I'm freaked out. He checks the house, no man. And I look at the girl and I say, can you describe the man? Do you know his name? And she goes, yeah, his name is Jesus. He's everywhere. So my daughter Savannah is epileptic and most of y'all know this by now. And when she has grand mal seizures, which doesn't happen very often, like it's a production, right? Like she makes noises, there's warning signs, and then she drops, seizes, goes into her tonic clonic phase and then goes to bed for a few hours and then she wakes up, she's totally fine. Well, listen, I was just in the kitchen talking to Savannah. I was putting a little Uncrustable in the toaster for my son and she stops talking to me mid sentence, no warning at all and just whoosh, drops. And I'm like, Whoa. And I catch her and I ease her down to the ground. And I'm like, oh my God, here we go, here we go. And I'm like rubbing her head. I'm like, it's gonna be okay. She's seizing, I'm holding her. My son is climbing on my back at the same time. And I'm like, buddy, get out of here. Your sister's having a seizure. And all of a sudden, without missing a beat, she stops seizing and goes, <laughs> hi mom. And I'm like, I'm having a full blown panic attack. I'm like, are you okay? And she's like, yeah, I'm fine. That was weird. Can I go play Roblox? This girl.